You are watching Eternal Warrior on MTGO Academy featuring Rex Start. Hey everybody, it's Chris, MTGO's Rex Start, and um, to accompany the videos this week, I'm going to um, go through a brief explanation of the, the cards in this deck, um, and I've just gotten done recording the matches, um, so I, I kind of want to give you an idea of how this plays out with having had a little bit of experience with it, because I'm, I'm not a a combo player really at all so this was kind of new to me um, but basically you've got your um, you've got 30 creatures in this which is um, a little more than half the deck when you consider the Taxian probes are essentially free if you draw into one uh, during the run um, so uh, these guys are all free to cast now these guys you have to have a forest in play in order to do it and it uh, by having your opponent gain five life, you have to get to higher storm combo. Now that's sometimes irrelevant, but sometimes it isn't. Um, and uh, the list that I borrowed from did include these, and it had this fetch land, uh, dual land mana base to get forests to do it. But um, I think in having played through the list, I would probably recommend that you cut these and replace these with um, additional personal tutors or alternatively if you're going to go that way um, I would suggest using a gamble uh, since gamble can find either the glimpse or um, the scapegoat to keep you going which we'll get to in a second um, but I would probably put those on the chopping block and just accept that occasionally you might fizzle um, but it's better to have the chance to make the run than not to make it at all um, certainly it's more fun <laughs> so um, this is your mana. Um, again, this, and then I'll talk about it in the article, but uh, these eight lands could, uh, if you're not playing these, could easily just be um, four gemstone mine, four city of brass, and that could be better. And if you're playing in, in paper magic, that makes this a heck of a lot less expensive. So um, feel free to try that out. Um, the Lotus Petals are essential. Um, four Elvish Spirit Guide. It has to be Spirit Guide because you want... Um, the green to be able to cast the glimpse of nature so so that all of these mana sources are green um, certainly there are times when you're sitting there going man I just need to draw another red source to cast your grave shop and usually I found in all the gold fishing I did and then some of the matches I played that finding the red to cast grave shot wasn't a problem if I was in a position where I was going to be able to grave shot I usually had um, the ability to get it so I wouldn't worry about that too much, so I think that those are right. Um, Grape Shot's your general kill condition. Beastmaster Ascension um, was used here um, because uh, the guy whose list I sort of adapted this from used it. Um, you could even argue for putting a few of these in the sideboard, and I've seen some lists where they had that. Um, that you could, um, instead of just having to go off, you could just say, okay, I'm going to cast a Beastmaster Ascension with lotus petal and spirit guide and dump a few of these guys on the board and just swing in because i mean are they going to bring in are they going to have spot removal or mass removal against you maybe i mean you don't know what they're going to keep in but there's a chance they're going to board that out and you could just attack with some dorks into an opponent certain opponents might not be able to you know uh, like block and kill a phyrexian walker you know like uh, with their bob or something and you just get up to the number of counters and win i mean so maybe that's a possibility um but um, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's questionable, but I think you probably do want a second win condition. Um, now, I'm playing with one Noxious Revival so that I can get, if this gets discarded, countered, something like that early, um, I can uh, draw into this Noxious Revival and then get it back. One of the things you'll see, I think you'll see me do on the first video and then not do on the later videos is yield to all my draws. Um, if you have multiple glimpse draws, you don't want to yield to all your draws because you may draw something off the first one that makes you think, oh, wait a minute, okay, I need to, to cast a, say you draw a Noxious Revival and you're going to draw two on your glimpse, you may want to cast your Noxious Revival since it's an instant um, before between your two glimpse draws, basically, because there will be situations where you're like, you need to get something back from your yard, whether it's a Lotus Petal or land or um, you know or if your grape shot was discarded earlier or something like that so uh, as annoying as it is don't go on to to yield um, to your draws because um, you'll want to be able to do this um, again uh, noxious revival is a card that I really wish that I could play with maybe one more in the main deck but the space on these things is so tight um, 
Genki Taxium Probe and considering basically just a freebie to cut the deck size down to 56. Uh, obviously it's not really a freebie in the sense of, you know, if it's in your opening hand, it's a question mark, right? It's not what you want it to be, but if you draw it in the middle of a run, it's a freebie. Um, and of course it's it's worthwhile knowing if your opponent has counter magic. Um, so that you, so I, I mean, I think it's worth including definitely here. Um, and uh, it keeps you from, maybe it lets you get away of not having to play quite as many of these guys. So if you're going to cut these ridiculous looking things here. Um, the uh, the Kobolds, there's 12 Kobolds. There's the Shield Spheres, the Phyrexian Walkers, Memnites, and Ornithopters. Uh, these are the only ones which have Defender. Um, so that does kind of make the Beastmaster Ascension plan okay. But uh, without anything else, don't count on being able to beat down of these because none of them have power except for the Memnite. Um, the Scapegoat is... Uh, an interesting one here. Obviously it was designed, um, I guess maybe to save all your guys from a wrath and just let one guy die or something. I'm, I suppose that's what they're thinking here. But what you're obviously using it for is, and the way Moto is going to do it is, it says an additional cost to cast, it's a sacrifice, but it will want you to target all the creatures that you want to return first. So you get in the middle of your run, um, and uh, you're going to cast scapegoat to uh, basically bounce you know so you have five or six of these zero mana guys you're going to obviously have cast one or more glimpses earlier in the turn then you're going to um, bounce five of them back sacrifice one of them to scapegoat and then you're going to replay all the other guys and at that point you have so much fuel that you're, you're probably good so that, that argues for possibly playing more of these things. It's just that when you start out your run, you need to have a certain number of these zero guys, because if you think about it, um, you know, some of these zero guys, about half of them are just going to be your, what your draw off the glimpse is just going to be another zero guy, right? So what you need is the other half of those things that you draw to be um, the mana um, that you need uh, to in order to keep things going say um, cast an additional glimpse what have you um, so you need you need to start out with a certain number of fuel so my thinking on this is you probably don't want to have this at, in your hand at the start of the run so much as you want to draw into it um, near the end when it's going to bail you out so I don't know that you want to play like four of these um, but I think you want to probably play more than one but again the, the space is just so tight there's you know there's a limit to how much of any of this stuff you can add. Um, it's possible that you just want to throw caution to the wind and just play all the noxious revivals in the sideboard for discard decks and just up your scapegoat count here by a couple. Um, again, I'm not really sure. But uh, but anyways, that's how it works. So you'll, you'll target all those guys, and then at the end, it'll ask you which guy you want to sacrifice. So remember which ones you targeted and then sacrifice them. Um, the other one so um, and of course remember that this is an instant so you can cast it at um, it if, for instance if you stall out uh, and you draw this later or you have another glimpse in hand um, you can always cast this at the end of your opponent's turn and then on your turn um, cast your glimpse and start going off again um, anyway so it's nice to have kind of a reset button there uh, the sideboard um, I went with, um, I knew I would want four Xanted Swarms here um, against Counter Magic and um, Noxious Revivals against Discard. Uh, I probably should just play four Inga Chewers uh, for the um, Chalice of the Voids, but I thought I was going to be cute here and play Multani's Presence um, against um, Chalice of the Void decks, uh, which basically, if they Chalice of the Void you for zero, then you can just turn all of, the, basically they're casting, this is the equivalent of playing Glimpse of Nature, because every one of these guys you cast is going to draw something. Now it's not quite as good in the sense you can't use your scapegoat or whatever, but um, uh, you know, you'll still at least get, if you have a red mana out, you can still theoretically go off and cast Grape Shot. Um, at some point, but but I think that this is probably a little too cute, and I don't think I would include that. Although I've seen some lists where you play your own Chalice of the Voids and um, use Multani's Presence uh, with it, but again, I think the whole thing is a little too cute. So I would probably not do this, um, but you know, what else you really want in here? You could probably just play four copies of whatever. <laughs> Maybe there's, I think, two additional Ingot Chewers, and then you could leave these Wisp Mares in here, I suppose, because, you know, who knows what they might be playing against you. Um, anyways, uh, so that's how the deck uh, works, and um, again, I'm going to have a lot of 
uh, ideas about what you might change with it, but um, it, it's a deck that I think would need much, much more time and effort into refining it than one person can do in the span of a week. And, uh, you know, I, there are a lot of different divergent opinions about it. And it's just, it's so, it, the space is so tight that trying to get everything in here, maybe it's just impossible to come up with an optimal build. But um, anyways, if you kind of like the, the math problem, and the, it's sort of a math problem and a strategy problem riddled together here, the deck building, and um, uh, actually the, the going off with it part is kind of fun. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, you'll have to watch the videos to see what you think. But uh, anyways, um, thanks for, for joining me here, and uh, be sure to stay tuned for the, uh, the videos uh, shortly.